For the few souls anchored in Latuya Bay, it was the end of a perfect summer day. At 10.15 p.m., a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck the Fairweather Fault. saw the mountain itself begin to move. cubic yards of rock, a weight of 90 million tons, was now in freefall. The impact would not just make a splash, it would empty the bay. cubic yards of rock, a weight of 90 million tons, was now in freefall.
translation, but a wave of pure vertical displacement. Traveling at over 100 miles per hour, the wave had the energy of a meteor strike. pointed his boat into the abyss, attempting the impossible, to ride the monster. From the top of the wave, he looked down on the trees that lined the shore. Against all odds, they had survived. But the wave's work was not yet done. Having carried the survivors to safety, the wave's immense energy turned upon the land itself. In a matter of seconds, 200 years of growth was stripped back to bare rock. When the water finally grew still, a new landscape was revealed, a graveyard of trees. The event lasted only minutes, but the scar it left would last for centuries.
violence is a memory. The scar is a story. But the land endures. But what powerful forces of geology conspired to create such a monster? Latuya Bay sits directly on top of the Fairweather Fault, a place where the Pacific and North American tectonic plates grind against each other. On that night, the fault ruptured. The ground shifted horizontally by 21 feet and vertically by over three feet. The landslide fell from a height 3,000 feet, striking the water like a solid object. This was not a normal tsunami. It was a colossal splash, a mega tsunami, forced up the mountainside. This event rewrote our understanding of what tsunamis were capable of. The scar remains, not as a wound, but as a story told by the trees themselves. It is a reminder that in this world, there are forces far greater than